What is up, it's Ike Mel. We do a little quick audio and visual test. Make sure we're all good here. Yo, thank you for everybody joining me this evening. Boom. Okay, we're good. What's up, man? How you guys doing? We are going to be doing a follow up. This is a follow up to the children in Texas that were abandoned. And I'm going to have the neighbor coming out in a minute on video. I want to present to you a couple of details of the case. I want to go over some of the video clips that we haven't covered yet. And then I'd like to bring in the neighbor. So, uh, and possibly the private investigator as well. Let me just make sure my screen's looking a little funky here. Make sure we're good. Okay. Welcome, welcome. There we go. There's the chat. All right. Uh, yeah, I was on Popcorn Planet earlier today. Uh, went really good. They're doing a charity. I think they're still live, actually. They're doing a charity stream for DV. And after I got off, I saw, I think, JB went on there, Brian Enton, Red, White, and Bethune, Dog the Bounty Hunter, a lot of people. A lot, a lot of people. What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome. Give it a second here. I shouldn't have opened this yet. I'm all over the place. I wasn't planning on having the neighbor come on. Apparently, I know this person, like their sister. I know from a previous story in case. This person messaged me last night, and then I got back to them today. And like an hour before I got on here, or an hour and a half or something like that before I got on here, she was like, you know, that's my sister. I'm like, what? So I was like, you want, you want to come on? Join us? And if you're wondering, this is the neighbor that I'm talking about that we're going to bring on in a second here. If you guys wouldn't mind hitting like, I'd appreciate that. Uh, she's going to be coming on. I'm also going to see if I can get the private investigator to come on for a bit. He has something to do at 7. So I'm going to see if we can catch him before he has to go do that. I'll show you this quick clip. That's the lady I'm going to have on. Uh, all right, so let's go over some of the timeline. They call this the timeline in Houston House of Horrors case revealed. And so uh, tw in November 20 through the 29th around, it's just like a, an estimate, 2020, Brian Coulter allegedly beats the eight-year-old Kendrick Lee to death inside the apartment complex. So this is the initial incident. Now, Brian Coulter, he's 31. It's one of the articles that I read. He's the, the mother's boyfriend, Gloria Williams. They had dated a couple of years back. They started, I, I think I heard 2016. And so she supposedly has six kids. Mother has six kids. In the home at the time, it was four boys, but it ended up being three now. And Kendrick Lee, when he passed away, the boy that was killed, he was eight at the time of death. And so we're going to see a little bit of somebody named Melody Robinson. That's the mother's mother, the grandmother on that side of the family. And then we're going to read a little bit about Linda Smith, which is the mother of one of the other boys. Now, Linda Smith, okay, you guys might remember this post I brought up in one of the first streams. Jonathan Kirkland, he said, my son was one of the kids that apartment. My baby mom is Gloria Williams. I'm trying to get the boys out. Uh, I guess he meant to say ASAP, please contact. So Linda Smith is his mother, which is the grandmother to one of the boys. The boy that they're referring to, his name is Javion Kirkland, a seven-year-old. And now 
He's the boy that recently had his jaw broken. So this we're not talking about the, ch- the kid that's deceased. We're talking about another child that was recently beaten. Now, the notes that I have here. Investigators said that Williams and Coulter had been together for a few years and abuse was a common place for the Williams boys who had two different fathers, one of whom have, who ha- has since died. Coulter and Williams moved into a place about 25 minutes away, according to police. The rent for the Houston apartment continued to be paid by the government assistance. And so a lot of people were wondering, how, how is the rent getting paid? Who's paying this stuff? Apparently the government is paying for the house of horrors. Um, Williams occasionally stopped by to provide some food and also sent some food via delivery. At one point a few weeks ago, Coulter allegedly, this is the guy, Brian, attacked the middle child, leaving him with a broken jaw. The kid never saw a doctor, but will now undergo surgery to fix his shattered face. So that very same boy, this is his father. All right. We didn't know this before. I wasn't sure. And I was like, I don't know if this is actually, this is him. So just to kind of tie things in together, it's kind of crazy. And so March, 2021, Coulter and Gloria Williams, um, Kendrick's mother, move out of city parks to apartment leaving her three sons to live alone with Kendrick's skeletal remains. October 2020, Coulter allegedly attacks William, uh, William's 10-year-old son, breaking his jaw, which for some reason I thought I have have a seven-year-old. I have seven. I have a seven-year-old listed here, but we'll double-check after. The boy receives no medical attention. Maybe I got it wrong. William's 15-year-old son texts his mother. Oh, no, wait. This is, says October 2020, so this must be the, f- I don't know. Let me just keep reading it then. William's 15-year-old son texts his mother he cannot do this anymore and calls 911 to report the brother's death. To report his brother's death, police arrive to discover the corpse in a filthy apartment. October 25th evening, deputies question Coulter and Williams, but let them go without charges. This is what kind of took me back and took a lot of people back. October 26, Harris County Medical Examiner rules Kendrick Lee's death as a homicide, leading to the arrest of Coulter and Williams. Boyfriend is charged with murder, while the girlfriend is accused of injury to a child with a mission and tampering with evidence. And I wonder this if they meant to say 2021, because the thing I had here. It says at one point a few weeks ago, and this is according to the Daily Beast, Coulter allegedly attacked the middle child, leaving him with a broken jaw. So that's a little bit of the timeline there. I want to get to what I'm going to do is I'm going to play these two clips while I fix some things in the background. Uh, You're going to be able to see the family speak. of a child were found. We're covering a very disturbing case out of West Harris County now. Late yesterday, a mother and her boyfriend were arrested after remains of a child were found. 35-year-old Gloria Williams has been charged with injury to a child by omission, and 31-year-old Brian Coulter has now been charged with murder. Williams' family says they haven't spoken with her in months. It's a story you'll see only on two. How did we get to this? How did... How could you not reach out and just be like, y'all, I've, it's, we, I've lost control. It's, it's not in a good space. Mm-hmm. And we, we would have taken, taken all of the kids. The children had been living with their brother's skeletal remains for nearly a year. We have team coverage for you tonight. Rochelle Turner has more on the investigation. But we begin now with Taisha Walker with the story you'll see only on two. Taisha, what else did the family have to say to you? Lauren, the family says Williams basically was estranged that they would hear from her on and off. Her number was always different, as well as her address. In fact, they said they didn't even know that the family was staying at this apartment complex because the last time they met them over the summer, it was just the boyfriend who came outside of the apartment complex a 15-minute drive away. I seen the news or the news article about the kids, and 
but I never thought it was her. Christy Smith and everyone sitting on this couch is related to Gloria Williams. The 35 year old mother of six is charged with injury to a child and tampering with evidence, while her 31 year old boyfriend is facing murder for the death of her eight year old son, Kendrick. Harris County deputies say Kendrick was beaten and his corpse was left to decompose for 11 months inside of an apartment the couple abandoned to live elsewhere. Kendrick is auti was autistic. Um, to my knowledge, when he was. Kendrick is autistic. Yeah. And that's what you heard about on the press conference. They believe that some of them might be the kids. Come around our family. He would, all he did was smile. Cousin Yasmin Craig says Kendrick was mostly nonverbal. She says as a family, they offered to raise Kendrick when he was younger, but William refused. My mom has been asking for Kendrick since the day he was born. All because we knew that a lot, all these kids, eventually, she was not going to be able to be the best parent she can be. Family members say Williams had six kids, including the three surviving boys who were also living in the apartment, and two girls, whom she no longer has parental rights. Melody Robinson has full custody of the youngest daughter and says CPS told her this late last year. Because um, Gloria gave up her rights to her and she failed the first child. That, um, that they would be going in to take all the other four boys. The family says Williams was estranged, only reaching out for money, always saying the kids were fine. Anytime we did go help, where the kids at, how they doing? Oh, they in school? Yeah, it was always So we, and we never had an apartment number. She always be like, okay, I'm gonna meet y'all at the front of the apartment. So this is uh, Gloria's family, uh, the mother of the kids speaking out. Another question so many viewers have been asking, aside from where was extended family, they wanted to know how was Williams able to pay the rent here with these kids living here by themselves? The family members that I spoke with say they believe with disability checks that she was receiving for some of the kids. We do know not only Kendrick had autism, but another one of those four boys that was living inside of the apartment complex behind me. So the articles both state the middle child the middle child is not the seven-year-old that i'm talking about the middle child would be the 10 year old and i don't i think for the surviving children i'm going to try to avoid their names um so there was the 15 year old he's the one that called 911 then there's a 10 year old and then there's a seven year old and so the one that got punched recently uh and is getting reconstructive surgery is the middle child it's not javon the seven year old which i thought I thought because there's a couple of boys a little confusing. Yeah, 15, 10, and 7. So the middle child would be the 10 year old. Now, uh, let me take you through this article. Then I have another video that we're going to watch. This one is kind of really, I have to say, graphic. So um, it's very detailed. I listened to like half of it yesterday. We're going to get into this in a second. Um, we just did this. Also, this guy appeared in court today, Brian. He didn't show up the first time because he was having like a mental health assessment. And so I believe today or yesterday, I believe he showed up in court. Or it might be today. So let me walk you through this a little bit here. The grandmother of one of Gloria Williams' daughters has described the woman at the center of Houston's shocking child case as being very unstable and accused her of failing to protect her six children, including the eight-year-old autistic boy, who was beaten to death and left to rot in an apartment with his siblings for over for over a year or a year. Williams has been charged with, with injury to a child by omission and tampering with evidence, a human corpse. A judge set her bond at 900,000 on Wednesday. And I believe the guy got 1 million. I think. Melody Robinson, the paternal grandmother of Williams, 13 year old daughter, because on the previous, the first live stream, we discovered that she has other kids, but the daughter, I think it's two other girls but they don't live with the biological mom i guess they live with grandmother who has custody of the girl of age two let me see grandmother williams grandmother of williams 13 year old daughter who has custody of the girl from the age of two the mom of six not a mother after allegedly turning a blind eye to her son's murder and her other children's abuse robinson also revealed she is now caring for williams 17 year old daughter who allegedly had been kicked out of the house by her mother at the age of 15 and forced to live on the streets after trying to protect her brothers from abuse. Crazy, huh? Williams' boyfriend, Brian 
Coulter, 31, is charged with felony murder in connection with the November 2020 beating death of Williams' eight-year-old son, Kendrick Lee, and his bond is at a million. The child skeletal remains were discovered by the police on Sunday inside an unfurnished Houston apartment with soiled carpet, flies, and roaches where his three starving brothers ages 15, 10, and 7 had been living alone with no blankets and surviving on junk food deliveries from, from mom and handouts from neighbors for months, which we're going to have the neighbor on in a second. Um, oh, yeah, let me play this. I think this is a clip. the picture somewhere in this article we're going to actually see this woman talk melody but there was another clip oh and this is a family picture this photo from four years ago shows williams left her mother center and along with her six children the boy in the colorful t-shirt is kendrick lee who was beaten to death november 2020 so this is the family picture this is the deceased child. This is like the family. This is the video we're going to watch in a second. Authorities on Wednesday alleged that Coulter punched and kicked Kendrick to death around Thanksgiving Day last year, and Williams refused to report him to the police, claiming she was afraid her children would be taken away and end up in jail. Um, the grandmother said her son previously dated Williams for about three years. And at one point, the whole family stayed with her, including Williams' two daughters. So the entire family was living there with grandma at one point. Including Williams' two daughters and four sons, at least two of whom are autistic, as we heard from the, the press conference. In separate interviews with Fox 26, KTRK, and KPRC, Robinson said Williams did not have her life together and had refused repeated offers of help from relatives. Our job as a mother is to protect our children, Robinson said. She failed that baby. She failed her kids in that area. She did not protect her children. Robinson said when Williams' youngest daughter turned two years old, the woman who was pregnant at the time with her fourth child contacted her asking if she could take in her granddaughter. Williams later gave up her parental rights to her daughter, allowing Robinson to take full custody of the girl. Robinson revealed that she has recently received conservatorship of Williams' 17-year-old daughter, who she said had been ejected from her mother's home at the age of 15 after trying to prevent Coulter from abusing her younger brothers. And uh, this part I read, she was forced to live on the streets for more than a year, and she ended up at the hospital Children Protective Services contacted Robinson, even though Robinson was not the girl's biological mother, she took her in so she could live together with her younger half-sister. The 17-year-old wanted to be with me, and so the mom didn't want her told me, sorry, let me read that again. The 17-year-old didn't, the 17-year-old wanted to be with me, and so the mom didn't want her and told me just to take her and didn't want her back, the grandmother said. The grandmother said the two sisters would talk to their brothers on FaceTime. Williams, 15-year-old, never mentioned that their younger had died. Wow. Williams' relatives revealed to KPRC that two of her sons were likely autistic, including Kendrick, who was described as mostly nonverbal. When we would come around, our family all did, all he did was smile and be playful and laugh with you, Williams' cousin Yasmin said, when Kendrick was born, Craig's mother pleaded with Williams to let her raise him, but she refused to give him up. We knew that with all of these kids, eventually she was not going to be able to be the best parent she could be. Relatives said that Williams kept them at arms, at an arm's left and would only reach out to ask for money. Whenever, would, whenever they would ask about their children's well-being, she would assure them that they were fine. She kept saying they were okay. They're in school. We never had an apartment number. We didn't think anything of it. Also, I didn't even know the apartment. Yeah. Sorry about the butchering of the reading there. So Linda Smith. So this is the the other grandmother. This grandmother is Linda Smith. 
She's the mother of Jonathan Kirkland, I believe, who is the um, grandmother of Javion. Linda Smith, the grandmother of one of William's young sons, told Daily Mail in an interview on Wednesday that she had known, that had she known what was going on, she would have adopted her grandson, J Javion Kirkland, seven years old, with his brothers. Meanwhile, Coulter's family have released a statement seeking to distance themselves from the accused child killer. We are deeply saddened by the events that have unfolded. This is not who we raised our son to be. Our hearts and prayers go out to those brave children. Our relationship with Brian has been distant for years. And we, we saw his Instagram, all that crazy stuff he was posting. And we, all, we know about this stuff. They're already in the, they were arrested in the public library. Um, let me see what else we can skip to because I'm gonna we're gonna hear some of this in the video. The grandmother of one of the young children who were abandoned and neglected by their mother exclusively tells Daily Mail, I wish I would have known how bad the situation was for those kids. Uh, I would have adopted all of them. This is Linda Smith, 71 years old. She was sickened by what Gloria Williams and her boyfriend Brian Coulter are accused of doing. She sat down with the Daily Mail, she shared pictures. These are all the kids' names. Uh, Smith's son, Jonathan Kirkland, is the father. There it is, Jonathan Kirkland, the father of the seven-year-old Javion Kirkland. He has been in and out of jail for the last several years and hasn't been a part of his son's life. And that's the picture I was just showing you guys. Let me show you a different one. That's Jonathan. My son was one of the kids in that apartment. My baby mom is Gloria Williams. I'm trying to get out. Get the boys out of, I don't know, please contact me. Something like that. All of Gloria's kids lived with me for a short time in 2014. My son went to jail for about six months, she said. I soon found out when my son was in jail and I was at work, Gloria would have different men come over my house. I don't know what she was doing with them. As soon as I found out, I was confronted. I confronted Gloria with it. Of course, she denied it. But I told her she and the kids had to leave. So she was staying with her, all the kids. A few years ago, Smith said Williams called her and asked her to meet a meet at a McDonald's. She brought Javion along with along for Smith to see. Looking back on it now, I think I would have asked her. I think if I would have asked her, she would have let me adopt Javion. It was just a feeling I got. Smith says she found out about what happened to her grandson and Gloria's other children from the media. I'll adopt all of them. I'm heartbroken to hear what happened to them, especially Kendrick. And she just kind of goes on to talk more. There's some more family pictures. It's a really, really long article, but I just kind of wanted to break in some of the details so I can show you the next clip. And this stuff we already covered. All right, so let's go with this portion here. This is uh, just a heads up. This is kind of graphic. And then we're going to get to the neighbor after this. We'll see if we can get her on. Williams. Good morning, Ms. Williams. Ma'am, you're charged with the third degree felony of injury to a child by omission, the first degree felony of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury, the second degree felony of tampering with evidence uh, when that evidence is a human corpse. I have looked at the alleged probable cause facts for these three charges, including the supplemental statement of facts, which I believe was supplied to the public defender's office. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause for all three of these cases to go forward. 
All three cases will go to the 230th District Court. That's going to be Judge Chris Morton. Will you need a court-appointed lawyer from Judge Morton? Would you like the help today of Attorney Chris Henderson from the Public Defender's Office? Ms. Keith, on the question of bond for each of these three charges, what is the state's request? In the first degree felony, I am requesting a $500,000 bond. And in the injury to a child by omission and tampering with evidence cases, I'm requesting $250,000 bonds. And I am opposed to personal bonds. Not necessarily because the injury cases are prohibited by this court for personal bonds to be granted, but mostly based on the horrific facts and circumstances of this case, which resulted in the death of a seven-year-old child. As is reflected in the statement of probable cause, officers were called out to a residence in Harris County on Greencrest Drive on October the 24th of this year regarding the death of the minor complainant, who is the child of this defendant. There were three juvenile witnesses who are also complainants in these cases. There were a 15, 10, and 7-year-old child who are witnesses to the incident. Officers arrived, spoke with the 15-year-old child, who stated that he found his younger brother, the deceased minor complainant, in a bedroom of the residence sometime around Thanksgiving of last year, 2020. He believed this defendant would call the police, told officers that she never did so, and that she then had moved out of the apartment, leaving them in the residence with his deceased younger brother without adult supervision. He stated that they had found his younger brother approximately one week before Thanksgiving. He also told officers that the co-defendant, who is the boyfriend of this defendant, would lock them in a bedroom, and he would hear them hitting his brothers while he was in the room with them. He stated he told this defendant about the conduct, but she ignored him, said she would talk with the co-defendant, and the 15-year-old stated, quote, that never worked. Officers also spoke with the 10-year-old complaining witness, who is the complainant in the first-degree felony serious bodily injury case, who stated that he was actually in the room when the co-defendant assaulted his deceased younger brother, striking him in the face, feet, buttocks, back, his legs, and testicles with closed fists and feet. He stated that the co-defendant then laid his brother on the floor and put a cover over him, that the defendant then came in the room to check on his younger brother, saw the body under the cover, she began crying, then made him leave the room. The 10-year-old stated that the defendant and the co-defendant then began fighting because the co-defendant had killed his younger brother. He stated that the defendant then came back another day, checked on his younger brother, and found that his body, feet, and teeth had turned into a skeleton. He stated that the co-defendant would beat him as well, hitting him on his buttocks, legs, stomach, and face, and punched him in the jaw, causing his face to be swollen. He stated when the co-defendant would drink beer and alcohol, he would get very strong. The 10-year-old also stated that his younger brother was on the floor under the cover, that his body was a skeleton, and that his hair was off. Law enforcement officers on scene observed that 10-year-old child to have extensive swelling to his face and jaw when they made contact with him on October 24th. He was transported to Texas Children's Hospital where it was discovered that he had blunt force trauma to the face, which would require surgery because medical treatment was not sought or obtained when he was injured. 
During a forensic interview the following day, he disclosed that the injury had occurred when the co-defendant struck him in the face approximately three weeks prior, and that this defendant was aware of the injury but did not seek or obtain medical aid for him. The seven-year-old child was also interviewed who stated that he saw it when his older brother, who is now deceased, was injured. He said he saw the co-defendant punching his brother, that the, his brother was lying down and the co-defendant kicked him with his feet, that his brother was not moving and the co-defendant continued to kick him and stared, and stared at his younger brother as he kicked him. He stated his younger brother his eyes were black and that he stopped blinking during the assault, that they pulled back the covers and saw that he was really dead and saw roaches everywhere on him. Officers also spoke to this, this defendant on October the 24th, 2021, uh, when she was interviewed. And she stated that in November of 2020, before Thanksgiving, she had gone into the bedroom where the deceased complainant and two other children were at. Uh, she witnessed the co-defendant punching her uh, now deceased son. She stopped him, said she stopped him from continuing to assault him, that she entered the bedroom the next morning and found him covered with a blue blanket that she pulled back and found him to be deceased. She confronted him, the co-defendant, who stated he was sorry that he lost it and punched him and continued punching him until he went to sleep. The co-defendant told her that he covered him up with a blanket after he went to sleep. The defendant admitted that she knew he was deceased in November of 2020, but did not notify law enforcement at the time of his death because the co-defendant had told her not to. She was afraid that the children would be taken by Child Protective Services and that she would go to jail. Officers on scene on the 24th found the deceased and badly decomposed body of the nine-year-old complainant discovered under a blanket in the bedroom. A, an autopsy was conducted and the cause of death <clears throat> was found to be a homicide due to homicidal violence with blunt force injury. I'm requesting uh, those bond amounts uh, and I'm opposed to lower bonds as I do have concerns for the safety and protection of these surviving complainants and do not believe that this defendant should be permitted to have any contact with these children or any children in the community. I am requesting a protective order for the uh, surviving children um, and as well as urging the state's motion for bond conditions. I believe there was one filed in every case, so uh, the first degree, that she have no contact of any kind with any of these children or the co-defendant, that she be ordered to surrender any travel documentation uh, in the form of a passport, visa, or other travel documents, that she not possess or use any firearms, ammunition, or other weapons, or use, possess, or consume any alcohol controlled substances and that she be drug tested, that she be subject to an electronic monitor with a curfew of house arrest, that she have no contact of any kind with any child under the age of 17 or participate or supervise any activities involving children under the age of 17. All right, farewell, Mr. Henderson. Thank you. 
job for that period of time. Um, if she's familiar with public transit in Houston and can use that to make her appearances. She can abide by any no contact uh, provision with uh, uh, any children in the age of 17. Uh, and children, uh, she can live in a separate residence from the children while they're in CBS custody. She can abide by uh, bond conditions. So requesting a $200,000 bond. All right, thank you, Mr. Henderson. Yeah, the volume was really low for that. I can't control it unless I download it and edit it. I try to turn it up a little bit for you guys. But basically, he's asking to lower the bond and trying to give reasons why she should have a lower bond. Um, they're kind of making a plea. Just for clarification, the protective order is being requested in the first degree. 17450640. Correct. All right, and the court will issue the MOAB under that order. Ms. Williams, I'm going to set bond for you on the injury to a child case. I'll set that bond in the amount of $350,000. On the tampering with evidence charge, I'm going to set that bond in the amount of $300,000. And on the injury by omission, I'll set that bond in the amount of $250,000. I am going to issue an order of emergency protection. It's going to require you to have no contact with the minor children, Trayvon Lee, Jordan Lee, or Javion Kirkland. They'll be identified in the MOAP by their initials because they are minors. In addition, I am going to issue a bond supervision order. That bond supervision order is going to require you to have no contact with those children. Uh, you may not use, possess, or consume any Ill illegal drugs or alcohol if you make bond. You may not use or possess any firearms or other weapons. I do want you to get a GPS device on within a day of your release. There will be a 24-hour curfew. You are prohibited from having any unsupervised contact with any person under the age of 17 years. You are not to supervise, participate, or attend any event where children under the age of 17 years are participants, and you must remain 500 feet away from any school, park, playground, or other location where children regularly gather. And that is, uh, that bond supervision order will be in the first degree case, same as the order of protection. Ms. Williams, are you a United States citizen? All right, if you'd have a seat for just a moment, I'll bring you back up. We'll talk more about the order of protection. Okay, so that was it for that. I'm getting ready to bring in the guest, if I can fix myself. Um, yeah, that was pretty, Pretty graphic. Um, there's one more clip that I wanted to show you real briefly, kind of running on a bit of a timeline. Um, I think I'm actually just let me just jump to the guest right now so we can do everything on time. So let me send out this link. Give our invite. Let me email it. Okay. I'm going to try to squeeze in the private investigator too. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch him before he has to go and do something. All right, I'm just going to give it a second. Or I guess I could play the video while we wait. Town Houston. Today is the first time since we have seen Brian Coulter since his arrest. And today, when that courtroom, when the judge formally read his charges to him and asked if he understood, he then repeated the charge as well as the possible sentence back to her. 
Now, he is charged with murder in the death of that eight-year-old child whose skeletal remains were found inside of an apartment last Sunday. Now, he also signed a legal consequences form today on an emergency protection order. This states that he's not allowed to have any direct or indirect contact with any of the three surviving children in that home. Part of his bond condition states he'd be required to wear an ankle monitor as well as be under house arrest and not have any contact with the co-defendant, his girlfriend, and the child's mother, Gloria Williams. Williams is charged with injury to a child and tampering with evidence. Now, bond in this case does remain at $1 million. And there one of know. the chief prosecutors with the district attorney's office, Andrea Bell, tells us she believes that this was a respectable bond given the charges and believes it takes community safety into account. Still, she says this case has been tough on everyone involved. So as one of the chief prosecutors in child fatality, this is the only type of case I deal with. Uh, I will say that this particular case um, is such a gross deviation from what we expect humans to behave like, uh, that it's been very emotionally difficult and taxing on the investigators, uh, the DA's office, and the priority should be making sure that the surviving children get all of the help that they need. Now, something else to note in this case, the presiding judge, Judge Morton, recused himself this morning. Instead, Ooh. Kelly Johnson filling in. Now, this means that this case will now be transferred to a new court and will likely impact Gloria Williams' uh, court hearing date. She was supposed to appear tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, but the district attorney's office tells us this will likely be pushed back until next week. Okay, so let me bring on the guest. We have it here. This is the neighbor. Gonna fix myself here. I'm all over the place. <laughs> hey, Hello. let me get you on the screen too. Welcome. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Oh wait, I'm showing up on two places. There we go. <laughs> welcome. Thanks for coming by. Um, I was talking to your sister earlier. I had no idea you guys were sisters. It's like a small world. And she was telling me, yeah, you guys live out there, and they do. You guys literally live right next to where the kids are at. Um, I live close there. Yeah. Oh, close to it. Okay. Well, yeah. Can you tell me some of your, like some of your experiences? Have you actually? You're the one that brought, or one of the neighbors that brought food to the kids. Yes, to Jordan. Um, I never got to see the other two kids. They didn't come outside. Oh, Jordan's a 15 year old. Yeah, Jordan would come and collect the food and then bring it home. Hmm. So you never saw any of the other siblings there? No, I didn't even know he had brothers. Okay. So what was it like? Because your sister kind of had a lot to tell me when I when I spoke to her. <laughs> uh, she's right by me, just so you know. Um, oh, what's up, Jess? Not much. What's good? What's good? I don't know. It's a crazy situation because I first met the kid sleeping on the slide. Oh, really? And I uh, asked him if he was hungry and if he was okay. And he just said he was hungry. So me and my niece brought him out food. And we were feeding him. Then we'd see him a few other times. We'd give him a few other things, but he never said anything about his brothers. Did you? Um, never say anything about the brothers. Did you guys ever see the mother there? Like, how often did she come? Did you ever have any engagement with her? We seen her. I seen her once in a while. She'd come and drop off, like, to sit at the car though. And Jordan would run down and grab bags of like chips, soda, and oodles and noodles, and then go back up. When I was talking to your sister too, she was kind of telling me that, um, like the noodle thing too, that they would eat it like just hard, like it wasn't actually cooked or anything. I guess there's they had no power for you know how long they, they had, had no, power, no for? power the whole time they were living in the unit, the whole year they had no power. Uh, have you ever seen the inside of the apartment or no? no? He won't open up the door to let anybody in, he won't let nobody in, and right now. The door was has all those like the the signs outside the door. Yeah, okay. pictures or something. We sent you some pictures. I put some stuff there myself. Let me pull Candles, up some letters, some teddy bears. But Jordan's a very smart kid. And you never seen like have you, how about the boyfriend? You guys ever see the boyfriend pop up over there? Or? Yeah, he used to walk around all the time actually. Oh. Have you ever had any engagement with him? Personal engagement, or you just seen him walking around? Um, I would say hi to him once in a while when he was with another boy that I know, another guy that I know here. But like, mm -hmm. I didn't sit down and chill with him or like talk to him, talk to him. No. 
Oh, uh, okay. Um, did you ever hear them like any screaming or arguing or fighting between mom and dad or? Nope. They wouldn't uh, come so... together. They never really oh, came right. together. Maybe once or twice I've seen them together. Okay. Did anybody ever call? Well, because I, I read reports to that multiple people like reported it to the building, like to to report that, you know, something was going on. It was reported to the police department also. Really? And or to security several times also that they needed to check on the unit and they never went up. Maintenance knew and never went in because there was a water leak to the neighbor downstairs who was also feeding him and they never went up to fix it. How you guys been there for a couple a while, a couple of years or I've been here for a year. Okay. Uh um <laughs> trying to you think know, for my reasons head. I'm not showing my face in camera. Yeah, I know. I know why, yeah, because you already you already been on TV. Um so you never seen the inside of the apartment. You've only don't you only saw one boy, the fifteen year old. Yeah. Um you would never if you if you met Jordan, you Jordan, would think anything yeah. was wrong. Last year when I first moved in, um the boys used to go outside, but then they stopped. Mm. Around the time they stopped going to school is when they stopped going outside. And did you um did you guys ever report anything or we've reported to the office and security back last week because there was another issue going on over here on the property with an infant that had gotten killed a girl had gotten jumped over here inside of our own home and there was a bunch of vultures over that building and we told security why don't you go look at that um in that building for the dead body over there and security laughed at us they refused to go look wow and um I remember you were telling me a story too. I don't know if you want to say it now, but supposedly another child was found dead over there in a different apartment. Yeah. in building seven, there was a child. Um, supposedly the mom took that child to the hospital, to the intensive care unit. They released her. And about a couple hours later, when she got home with the three to four month old child, it passed away. Uh -huh. So how often would you guys or would just Erica bring food just once in a blue moon or like um, every week? A lot. And so is the neighbor downstairs. He, I have given phone chargers to charge his phone. Mm. Oh, you did that. Okay. And it's just crazy, man. It's a horrible uh, situation where kids could be like that in that environment. And I guess well, nobody know. And Jordan, I guess, was afraid. Huh? I want to know why nobody knew sooner, especially when it was reported that he was sleeping in the slide. When you when you say he was sleeping on the slide, like like an all day thing, or like no, one day uh, me and my niece happened to be outside, and I looked up and I noticed that he's sleeping there, and I said something to my sister. It was like three o'clock in the morning, and we said, "All right, well, maybe we're just I don't know, you know." So then the next day I went out, he was still sleeping there. I woke him up and asked him if he was okay. He said that he was hungry. So we fed mm -hmm. him. We gave him. I forgot what we gave him. We gave him food and soda. But he won't eat anything that you make at a house. So you have to buy like sandwiches already made or like pizza that's already made. And when he charged the phone, like, was it inside your apartment or was it outside? Um, no, he asked me for a phone charger. I'd give him a phone charger. He oh, would, okay. uh, the guy downstairs from him was charging his phone for him. Oh, let me see if there's any questions in the chat. The guy uh, downstairs was also bringing him pizza up. And the way the guy downstairs had knew something was going on is one. He asked the boy if everything was OK. He was like, um, yeah, everything's OK. He said, did you guys like the first pizza I bought you? And the um, Jordan had said to him, yeah, we liked the first pizza you bought us. And he said and he said we. And then the little boy went upstairs, and so that's when he knew something mm. was wrong because he only thought there was one child up there. Mm. But they had wow. seen the boyfriend at one time over here in the complex. He was taking the younger boy, and he was flinging him like he was a bag of potato chips. Who, Brian was doing that to one of the kids? Yeah, he was doing it to the um, Kendrick. Wow. 
This was back last year. He's the one that is deceased now, passed Correct. away. Hmm. And then Jordan, Travion, and Giovanni or Javon are the ones that I'm actually trying to get custody of. Those are my boys. And so, oh, so clarify this for me. Clarify this for me. Um, so the one that has the the kid that has the broken jaw, it's Trayvon. It's not yeah. Javion. Okay, Correct. so I, okay, I made I made a mistake on that. So it's Trayvon's the middle child to the ten years old. Yes. Okay. Good to know. And the father, I was talking to the father earlier, and uh, he was like, yeah, he says, I'm going to need a lot of help trying to get my boys. And I said, well, you know, I was trying to get custody of your boys. And he says, yeah, but I want to get custody of them. I don't want to have them separated. And I said, well, that's what I was trying to avoid. Um, Jordan himself is going to fight for them not to be separated. Jordan will have more say than anybody, than the father, the mother, the state worker, anybody. The judge is already... He's already talking to the judge about it. He tells everybody those aren't his brother; those are his kids. Because he's been taking care of them. Yep. So. Mm. Um, the ten-year-old, the mother hasn't physically seen, from what Jordan has said, since he was three weeks old. So that tells me Jordan's had him since he's been three weeks old. Wow. Then I don't know if you know it, Gloria threw her 17-year-old daughter out and the um, other daughter's grandmother ends up with custody of her. Right. The which grand, the mother of? The other granddaughter. The, okay. the grandmother of the other grand okay. child that's Gloria's. I think only two of them have the same father, right? Two of them, only two of them have She's the same She's only father. got two baby fathers, so... And one died. One's dead, right? Are we including the one that's deceased, or yes, correct? Okay. Um, I know I started a GoFunding for the boys. We oh, started. A, uh, she yeah. started a GoFundMe, and she added the CPS worker in on the GoFundMe and everything else. The news, everything. <laughs> yeah, if you guys could send me the link then, or at, or text it to me when you have a chance, you can text after. Because I don't know if you've talked to the CPS worker, but right at this point, like. When you reach out to the CPS worker, she's like, okay, if you're trying to get custody of the boys, I need to see everybody's ID, birth certificates to everybody in the home. I need to know exactly who's in the home, and then we'll work on it from there, and I'll tell you what else we need after that. That's oh, weird, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They're supposed to be doing a cookout on Saturday in memory of um kendrick and in memory of the living boys for the struggles that they went through and then they're supposed to be doing some type of gathering on halloween as well over here in the complex i'm doing mine on halloween myself also okay and i heard i don't know if it's true or not but supposedly the father um what's his name jonathan started to go fund me i don't know if that's true or not did he do i don't it? know if jonathan did i can ask him but i know he okay. is trying to get his boys i know i did one Okay. Um, as far as I was told, uh, it has to go through and be approved through the news and the DCF worker before they will let anything go through on a no funding, on a funding for them. Like our GoFundMe, it was approved by the CPS worker. Her and name the is judge, Jennifer. The judge also signed off on it. And the kids, okay. three, uh, kids all have different attorneys. Three kids' attorneys also signed off on mine. They had to, or I couldn't do it. Um, okay, I'll take a look at it for sure and see. There are a couple people vet it. I had to send it to him before it was approved. They had to read what I wrote. Everything. Have you? You haven't had the chance to speak to a CPS worker, have you? No. Somebody sent me a phone number yesterday for one, but I don't specifically know. I'll text you the number for her now. Okay. She's um, on vacation right now, so she doesn't okay. come back until Tuesday from vacation. Melissa Sharon is on right now. Why she's on vacation? I know that because she called me. Okay. Um, I just sent you the message. You should have got it to your phone. Okay. Uh, all right. So yeah, I'll definitely check that out for next time. There's a lot of information um, on TikTok too. Okay. How's the morale around the? I mean, in that complex, has it changed? Is it kind of the same, or people? Um, it's pretty quiet over here. Like 
Over here, everybody was kind of like the mind your own business. We'll say hi and bye. Um, the past couple of weeks with everything going on, like the, the infant who died in building seven, the lady whose house was walked into and her daughter almost was beat, um, the child who fell out the third story window, um, and then this, it's kind of been a lot. So yeah. people are kind of distancing themselves. And even the child that fell out the third story window, um, her mom ended up going into a mental hospital and that was all over the news as well from over here. Wow. So it seems like a, a kind of like a problematic uh, area or complex, I guess. Yeah. Management doesn't issues. care to do anything. Management yeah. is like, okay, pay me. If I'm getting paid, I don't care what y'all do. Mm. Well, thanks for coming on. I mean, uh, I, I wasn't, really too prepared it was kind of last minute because i had no idea uh you guys are sisters and so i was just like oh let's just do this real quick get you on while i do the live stream but uh who knows maybe we'll do a follow-up if anything if, uh, if i have any questions i was gonna bring my pi friend because he had some really good questions in mind but I, I can't get a hold of him now so maybe well, next if, time we can try if you get a hold of him and you have any more questions just let us know yeah okay you know well, thank how to you get so much hold, you know how to get a hold of me <laughs> yeah we'll talk <laughs> all right all right thank you guys no problem Bye. all right so um let me get myself back on screen i yeah i wasn't prepared at all and i didn't know her sister and when i when i spoke to her sister the one that's like not the neighbor when i would talk to her we bounce off like boom 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 so I didn't know when I was going to talk to Erica. She's a little bit just kind of reserved and quiet. So it's a different type of conversation. Um, but that was the neighbor that we saw on the news. This neighbor right here. I think when I first played the clip, it was muted, I think. Did he tell you that he had any brothers? Why do you think he didn't tell people he had these brothers? After finding out what happened yesterday, I think he was more nervous and scared. Hey, are they going to blame me for this? Are my parents going to punish me for this? Did you like the first piece of that? And this is the other neighbor. This is the pizza one she was just talking about. About you? He said, what, the first one that we had? And that kind of made me wonder, why would he say we? Because I've always thought he was there by himself. Did he tell you that he had any brothers? Why do you think he didn't tell people he had these brothers? After finding out what happened yesterday, I think he was more nervous and scared. Hey, are they going to blame me for this? Are my parents going to punish me for this? Did you like the Somebody's saying who pays the rent. Uh, we covered it earlier. Apparently the government, it, it was like a, I guess a section eight type of thing. And so that's how the rent was being paid. And so they left and dipped out. But the electricity was cut off. They were just basically, I guess, just paying the rent. And they left the kids there with the body. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess that's it. I think I covered everything. Kind of screwed up at the beginning. Very kind of last minute. Uh, let me get the super chats as well. But yeah, it seems like a troubled neighborhood, man. Troubled community. Screwed up mother. Screwed up boyfriend. And it's like almost generational. And it was, I mean, the grandmothers seem like they have their head on right, but, you know, you see those unfortunate circumstances of one of the kids' father in and out of jail. And, uh, I mean, that guy might have killed two kids because the other child was is in the hospital right now getting surgery. Brian might have killed two kids. Pull this up real quick. Hmm. Uh, thanks, Dr. Crockle News. Hey, man. Uh, Justin, thank you for the super chat. No sound on the clip you played at 102. I, I replayed it. Thank you. Also, 102, or 102 arrested in Polk County for human trafficking sting. Wow. Holy crap. German Doll, thank you for the super chat. And Sally, fantastic interview. Thank you so very much. Thanks. I thought we were going to get a little bit more, but because when I spoke to uh, my friend, she was very detailed, very, very detailed. And it was kind of a little bit 
not as detailed <laughs> when I brought her on. Uh, but yeah, this is like stuff out of like a, a horror movie with these kids. Uh, and the mother, Gloria Williams, she's not, she has a bond set, but she hasn't bonded out. She's still, to my knowledge, from what I can see when I'm looking online, she's still locked up. People, people uh, handing, and it doesn't make any sense too when she was saying that uh, afraid for CPS to take her kids, and so she just lets them get killed. I guess doesn't report nothing. I mean, the other child almost got killed too. As far as the CPS thing, I'll t I mean not, not CPS, uh, GoFundMe. I'll take a look and see because I'm always hesitant about those things too, unless it's verified. So we'll have to take a look and see. Cause I have a, another friend technicals. They were, she reached out to somebody. They're trying to find out. I want to make sure if we do something that it's legit, you know, that we know that we know it's legit, like verified. Oh, my friend texts me. I would have gave more detail about the you like, yeah, <laughs> I know you would have, cause we had a whole different conversation when we spoke. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but it's all good though. So I appreciate your, your sister coming on. I usually like when I'm going to talk to somebody, first of all, when I do those types of things, when I like interview somebody, I like to do it offline. I don't like to be on a live stream because I like to kind of sit, prepare, have some questions, like a format thing written out. But like literally after, before I came on here, you know, I had to go pick up my daughter, school, all this stuff, dinner. Then I jumped on here. And we did that charity show. I wonder if that stream is still going on. They're going to be doing a 24 hour stream. <laughs> that stream was pretty cool. It was pretty dope. I don't normally collab. I was kind of hesitant just because I didn't, I didn't know him. Uh, Popcorn planet, but it went out. It went really well. Yo, they're still on too. Woo. They're doing a long stream. Six hours. And I, I know they passed 20,000, which is really dope. And I saw a lot of, a lot of people on there. I think they're kind of closing off now. Maybe let me see how much he made. Oh, they got 40,000. Wow. Amazing. Let me just show this real quick. <laughs> they got 40,000. That's popcorn planet. I was on there earlier today. They had, let me see. They had Brian Enton. Who's that? Oh, they got the lady from Sunrise Pasco. That's awesome. She actually came on. Let's see. Oh, this is Tyler Feller. I think I think it's his name. JB, Red, White, and Bethune. And that's Brian Enton. Oh, and there's Duty Ron. Yeah, they really put in a lot of work. And there's Dog the Bounty Hunter. Bruh. I was surprised to see him. I didn't think they'd uh they'd get him on. Dog the Bounty Hunter. And I'm sure he's probably because this is like it's going on six hours. He's probably gonna have to like chop it up and maybe put different parts out. That's Riley, debunk queen. That's me. So yeah, we had a pretty good time, and I appreciate them bringing me on. Um, Sarah, did Erica say that Gloria hadn't seen the ten-year-old since he was ten weeks, and that fifteen-year-old was raising him? Did I hear that right? That's what it sounded like to me. Which I was trying to think if, like, how would that be? possible i don't know I, I wonder how long have the boys been living there too were they living there the entire time oh i thought about i was gonna make it a call show too but i don't know if i should do a call show uh okay 
Go get funding. Okay, all right. So here's what we're gonna do with this, because I'm I'm texting my friend. She said if you want a better, more detailed interview, she says she will do it again, and it's not when a fast one. Okay, we could do that. Let's do. Uh, if you're watching still, next time let's do a, a, a offline thing maybe. And what I'll do is I'll have people put in the chat what questions they have, and then I can if if they want to contribute a little bit, they can put what questions they wanna or the, what they want to know. But um. But, you know, it could be a thing, too, where, hey, they're just neighbors. So, you know, maybe all they know is just a couple of comings and goings and, you know, helping these kids out. But they, they're probably not going to know the inner workings of what was going on inside that household. Uh, Jacob Speckman, you slash we should do a GoFundMe for them. So you slash we have say in how it goes i'm in for it i'd rather i'd rather i don't i hear what you're saying i want to wait a little bit to see exactly how and what and how it happens i don't want to manage somebody's funds because i just feel like that can lead to such a could be a problematic thing um because you know like for example what popcorn planet did today he set it up to through Streamlabs, and it directly went to um, that organization. Uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't want to run a GoFundMe and actually maintain it. Uh, but if there's some sort of uh, I don't know something established officially for the boys, that I wouldn't mind doing. That I wouldn't I wouldn't mind doing that at all. Um, but I because I, 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 I remember one time with a different story. There was this guy that was kind of troubled somebody emailed me about the guy and telling me like if I could find a lawyer for him and if I could start a GoFundMe for him, all that stuff. And I'm like, that just sounds like a mess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to manage somebody's funds, you know, but I, I'd rather wait for something, you know, this, for something to come out because those boys, they're in CPS custody. Uh, they were taken. So I don't know exactly how GoFundMe would work, you know? And I know, I know, um, people are very fishy and skeptical about skeptical about GoFundMe's. I know that. Um, so, or we could just do if there's enough people on Discord, we could do a little voice chat for a little bit and then head out. I mean, I can't stay for for so long either. I mean, we could just end it. Does 100% of the 40,000 go to the boys or does Popcorn Planet take a percentage? Um, well, Popcorn Planet's thing is a domestic violence thing. It's, it's a hundred percent that goes to the, um, to the organization. CPS lady is on the GoFundMe they have now. This one, the link that I was sent. Okay, I see they gave me a, a text message too. They're having a cookout. Okay, we'll wait and see. I don't know how this website works too. This is gogetfunding.com. But uh, yeah, I'll wait and see. We'll talk about it. We'll verify things, and then we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, uh. Check your Discord DMs. All right, let's see. TikTok. Is this related to the case? Let's see. Oh no, this is Gabby Petito. So I was doing All right, I'll take a look at this after. Uh. 
Let's see what else we got. What else we got? Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I don't particularly get into that stuff. The funding stuff. I mean, unless it's really, really, you know, um, like verified and stuff like that. Like the way um, I was doing some research oh. on the Carlton Reserve oh. when I. Oh no. Uh, the way that, the way uh popcorn had it set up was a good way, the right way. I mean, there's it just goes straight to the organization, so. I think that when things have to go through, like if it was to come through me and that I'm supposed to distribute it, I wouldn't want that because I want it to be clear that it's just, it's not even in my hands. It's going to whatever. Uh, Terry. Oh yeah. Terry, Terry's doing something, right? Terry, we're working on setting up an Amazon wish list, So all donated items go directly to the CPS officer in Harris County. Are you available for a second to come on? Or are you, are you busy? Oh, somebody, somebody was messaging me, telling me they're working on something. Is Terry technical? Is that the same person? Lily Rose, a wish list to purchase items for the boys would be an alternative to a GoFundMe. <laughs> oh, that's what I meant to ask. That I'm looking at Sherry stuff. I meant to ask the. Uh, she still texted me. Uh, did you guys smell anything? I don't know how far or close they were to the apartment, but were you able to smell anything? I don't know that there was a report that said some neighbors smelled really some stuff. No other way right, to describe this than straight out of a horror movie. I spoke with two neighbors here at this apartment complex where it all happened. They tell me that they've been feeding that 15 year old boy for up to six months. Now, while they knew something was off, they never imagined he would be living with two young brothers and a dead body. A living nightmare inside this apartment. Three young boys left abandoned in squalid conditions with their dead brother slowly decomposing. The Harris County Sheriff's Office says the 15 year old boy called police on Sunday saying his nine-year-old brother had been dead for a year in their apartment. And the mom hasn't been back in months. I first seen him, he was sleeping in the slide over here. Erica Chapman also lives at City Park 2 at West Oaks Apartments. She says she started feeding the 15-year-old boy six months ago. I noticed his mom a few times would come and park, and he'd run down and grab like oodles and noodles, chips and drinks, and run back up. But it wasn't enough. He was starving. He would not ma eat anything that you made. Um, you had to buy it. Like it had to be a salad that was closed from the store or a pizza, um, fruits. It had to still be in a bag. Another neighbor, Trevor Thompson, who doesn't want us showing his face, also started feeding the 15 year old about a week ago. And one day he came down and knocked on my door and asked, could I charge his phone? So I charged the phone. So from there, I built a bond with him. He says the apartment had no electricity and he saw the mother come and go, so started to offer him food. Thompson also describes him as paranoid. He was worried about getting poisoned. But he wouldn't take cooked food. He would take fruits and snacks. Both Thompson and Chapman didn't know the deep, twisted secrets and horror the 15-year-old was living with. Not only did he not tell them about the dead body, but his two young brothers, 10 and 7 years old, deputies say were also living in that apartment because i asked him did you like the first piece of that i bought you he said what the first one that we had and that kind of made me wonder why would he say we why do you think he didn't tell people he had these brothers after finding out what happened yesterday i think he was more nervous and scared hey are they going to blame me for this are my parents going to punish me for this now, really no other way that was the clip they sent me that has a little bit more of the interview um you're sending me pictures to the slide. Let me just pull up the slide real quick. Slide. This is the slide that she was referring to when she was on the phone. Where she saw um one of them sleeping. I get I'm assuming the fifteen year old, but Yeah, supposedly he was afraid of being poisoned. And I wonder where that came from. You know, I don't know. Was his parents doing that to him, putting stuff in his food? And so he had that, uh, 
paranoia. Yeah, Terry, how can I call you? How can I get a hold of you? Oh, she's technical. Okay, okay. Yeah, how can I get a... Um, can you maybe DM me on Discord? If you want, I can call you directly. Just send me your number on Discord. If you have it. Terry's an attorney, and she's also... I thought she was talking to somebody. She told me she was talking to somebody to get some help for the kids. Just give it a second, see if we can get her on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did send me a CPS worker. Name and phone number. Yeah, if you could um, call, I'm going to call you right now. You can just fill us in a little bit on some of the things you were telling me, what you're trying to do. It would be a good thing if there's something positive we can do. Let me call Terry. Your call has been forwarded to an automated oh. voice. Let me try again. Oh, there we go. Hello? No! Your call has been forwarded to a... Hello? Mel? Hey, Terry, we got you. Hi. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. That's okay. It's all right. Can you mute YouTube? I'm here. Can I do what? Mute YouTube. Yeah, I have you on YouTube. I, I have a couple of phones. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, if you could just mute it because I hear it. I hear myself in the background. Can you hear me clearly on here on the phone? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hey, so thank you so much for um, allowing me to call you. And I, I know you've messaged me on Discord and you've been talking to a CPS worker. I mean, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I used to work for CPS um, when I was in Texas. Kind of volunteered for them, did um, pro bono work for them for the kids. And um, so I knew some people over there and I ended up getting in touch with the uh the officer on this case she's new to the case so don't show her any hate um mm. but i mean she just got assigned it when when the kids were taken so anyway i was thinking i know that around here uh, in in my hometown when when a school needs something or the students need something or some kids that have been home need something, we set up an Amazon list and, and you know, the people that are caring or teaching or whatever the list is for, they give us a list of things needed and people can donate, just go to the list, it's listed on Amazon and you can donate um, some clothing or some books or uh, food or anything like that, you can you can do that through Amazon. You really? never touch anything, and and the only thing is to let um, uh, it, it, the only thing you donate is money. You none of us would ever touch it. It would go directly to Amazon, who would provide the services or items or food to um, the kids. And what we're trying to do now, apparently Harris County hasn't already got one set up. So we're trying to set up one specifically for these kids. And so, um, anyway. So in I, other I counties, they have it set up. Like they have a way you can, 
they can have an Amazon thing set up for what, like the county or CPS work, and it can get directly to that child? For specifically those children. I didn't know that. That's interesting. You're going to have to look into that. That's pretty so, cool. Um, so Harris yeah, County doesn't have one. That, yeah, Harris County apparently doesn't have it right now. So I'm, work, I'm working on getting that set up, getting a list of everything. I'll do all the, I'll type it all in and get it all set up. But again, you know, Amazon gets your money and they send stuff to the kids, period. There's no. That's really cool. Um, uh. And I just, I, I just really want to help these kids. Um. And it's kind of been my life's work. I've always done work for DCFS here in Louisiana or CPS in Texas and, and on on the side in my spare time. <laughs> but right. um, this is just uh, tragic. And uh, uh, I really, I'm just getting over crying from having watched your live. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's just brutal. It, I mean, it's just it's heartbreaking. I wanted to hear it because I wanted to know. You know, I, my first client when I first got appointed or I volunteered to to work for a CPS kid, my client was um, two weeks old, and um, had been beaten every day of his life, and I just. Ever since then, I've just kind of been on these cases, you know, when I when I see them happen. So. Oh, thanks, really Terry. Important. And I, I just really don't want to, you know, collect money or do any of that. I just find that to be questionable at all. Yeah, I think a lot of people, especially this day and age, and I don't blame them because I'm the same way myself, are very kind of skeptical and cautious, and they just want to make sure. That's when somebody was like, oh, do you want to start it yourself? I was like, I personally prefer not to. I prefer just official right. means that you don't even have to touch it. I don't mind promoting it as long as it's like we know, you know, whatever, it's official. Um, So that's, right. you've been in, in talks with that CPS worker, and we're just kind of waiting to see if we can get Harris County on deck with amazon bingo okay okay yeah let me know if there's anything that i can do i mean we can talk behind the scenes to try to get that happening because that would be a really nice thing that maybe i think people would kind of trust you know or well i think i told you i was talking to the lady first i talked to the sheriff's office and they're very upset there i don't know if you saw any of their pressers but yeah even the people that are talking about it are upset but the lady that i was talking to at the sheriff's office actually kind of started crying when i said my community here wants to help these kids and she was just like oh i mean she it was so tender and it felt so human and in these days where everybody's so you know um i don't know hard and angry at everybody it was nice that they want, they they really want to help these kids too. So if we can't get it done through CPS, I'll work with the sheriff's department. However, we can get it to the kids, we'll we'll do that. Right. Well, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely we'll be in touch. Uh, and let me know. You know, as soon as you know, uh, we can work something. Uh, you know, to to get that spread out once something official happens. Okay. Great. Cool beans. All right. Well, thank Thanks, you so Terry. Much for covering this case. No, thank you very much, too. Appreciate it. Thank you for the call. All righty. Good All right. Bye. I have like so many windows open. I kind of lost myself. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining the live. Um, I honestly, I kind of bombed this live. I'm sorry about that. I was just kind of rushing. I should have taken more time to read the article. I've been learning, just, I'm always learning something, but obviously pre reading stuff. And I didn't fully pre-read that article. I just saw the timeline. And really all I needed was the video because the video had most of the information anyway. Um, but it's going to happen sometimes. It's kind of uh, a little pressed. But that's why I don't do those things live anyway. Just to keep it in my mind for next time. I like to do it offline. You know, just for me personally. Researched. Um, just have my questions lined up and things like that. But it is what it is. Uh, let me just take a look at some more of the chats and then we'll head out of here. But 
the other thing too that struck me when um i guess one of the boys was saying in his testimony that like you know this guy was like drinking and stuff like that too and i think a lot of times i mean this guy's already screwed up brian but then you add in alcohol or drugs or anything else and it's just even magnified i think the one of the kids said that he gained like super human strength you know Lily Rose, a wish list to purchase items for the boys would be an alternative to GoFundMe. I think sometimes too, people kind of like that. The whole thing where like they, it makes them feel more involved instead of just kind of direct monetary, but like, yeah, I bought you this shirt or these pants or something like that. You know, uh, Jacob said, if I can get them a toy and some love, just let me know. All right, cool. We'll find out. We'll see from Terry. And I definitely want something that people feel comfortable about, you know? And uh, we'll we'll be we'll be following the story, see what happens. I mean, uh, it's just it's just crazy. I mean, like I've said in previous streams, I don't even like to like process it too much because if I process it too much, I mean, I used to have live streams and videos that I go crazy. I'd go cursing people out, calling people this and like just the people, the perpetrators that did these things, you know? Because I would get so angry and internalize some of the things, and then you don't even know what to say. You're just cursing up a storm. And I mean, the whole thing with the neighbors, I mean, it's, I say kudos that they were trying to help. A lot of people that are being critical, they feel that like, well, you know, they should have called police. Um, it's a weird thing because there was this, there was this story the other day. I don't know if you guys heard about it. I don't know all the details and I don't even want to think about it, but there was this woman, I believe she was like raped or something and people just watched. Was it on train? Raped something yeah a bunch of bystanders i don't even think anybody called the cops i think the person that called the cops uh i don't know if it was like the train person oh they're saying it's false now hold on a second a narrative pushed by authorities that pass passengers callously stood by as a man raped a woman on a Philadelphia train earlier this month is false. The prosecutor handling the case at a news conference said, I don't know what's true anymore now. Now they're saying it's false. They've been saying all this time that there was a bunch of people watching while it was happening. It just, to me, is like, you know, and they call it, I think they call it the bystander effect. Where, um, let's see, bystander. I think I did a video on that one time, a long time ago. Yeah, this it's called the bystander effect. And it's a thing where like you think that somebody else has probably called or you just don't want to get involved, you don't want to intervene. Oh, here here's a good picture. Let me show this. Bro, I mean you go to one news article, it's this, and then you go to another article, it's that. You don't even know what to believe anymore. I mean, the prosecutor is saying it, so. But this is like the whole thing where like, let's say you just see somebody lying on the ground and there's people walking by. And these are some of the thoughts maybe some people might think. And like the more people there are, it's like the more just kind of like do nothing a weird thing i don't know the whole thing behind it but I, I read about it one time but um yeah man i don't, I don't even know what to say anymore man. Yeah. So anyway, man, thank you guys so much for joining. Appreciate you. We'll see what comes up tomorrow as far as stories. I've been with uh, Brian Laundry. I really haven't seen much, right? But with Brian Enton, Enton's out there traveling. 
in Moab, Utah. He's been going to different places. He also went to Grand Teton. I don't know if you guys are aware. It's kind of cool. He's going in person. Oh, he actually went to marry Piglets. Piglets. That was the restaurant. I think that the whole altercation happened between Brian and Gabby. Traveling to Wyoming, all these other places. Uh, the other thing, too, I want to tell you guys. Let's see who remembers. Let's see who remembers this. A while back, I said Devontae Richardson. And that there's people in the news looking at that story again. Now, I've covered this story before. I think now it's like, I mean, I don't want to phrase it like this to sound bad. But now it seems like it's like the missing person wave. You know, people just jump from wave to wave. And so now it's like the missing person wave, even though we've been doing this. And Devontae Richardson, I told you guys a while back on a live stream, like, just wait for it. Wait for it. I know somebody that knows somebody that's traveling out there to recover the story because they want to bring attention to it again. And let me share with you this post. A friend of mine that lives in Wyoming share, share this post with me. And this was just seven hours ago. So remember I told you guys, right? Seven hours ago, DC missing man Devontae Richardson of South DC has been missing since July 2020. Oh, there goes my friend. And it kind of all the details kind of go on and forth but I, i've covered the story i even spoke to his mother on the phone which was kind of a weird conversation it's on it's on it's on my front page if you go to ick and mel this one's kind of long this is like almost 40 minutes long and we kind of went in depth and my friend was there from wyoming and this one i actually spoke to his mother and it was kind of weird conversation like it was kind of but no, nonetheless she agreed to come on which was nice of her and so this story might be coming back possibly into the spotlight. I think a lot of missing person story because of, I guess, I'm thinking because of Gabby are coming back into the spotlight. So there may be more coming from this. I think it's possible. There may be more coming from Devontae Richardson. And that whole thing was kind of weird because supposedly or allegedly he told somebody that he was going to go see Kanye West. And that's why he drove from, Washington, D.C. to Wyoming. Kind of a weird one. Thank you, Zanime. Uh, you yell fire, not rape. People run for fire. Mm. You know, sometimes the guy in a bar fight the third guy gets worse than the problem. That's true too if people kind of inject i think people just don't want to get involved they want to inject themselves they're maybe afraid for their safety the weird thing too is like sometimes people I, I think even with neighbors and stuff like that like thinking about these boys so the neighbors you know they're saying that they only knew about the one child the 15 year old and there's a lot of parents you know that they have to work that they leave their kids home i'm not saying it's right but like teenagers and so maybe, you know, maybe some of the neighbors thought that they were just doing the right thing and they're just trying to help somebody out that maybe the parent can't be home all the time, even though I guess they saw the, the bad food, but maybe they thought she couldn't afford it or something else. And they were just trying to step in and kind of do the right thing. And I guess people maybe are hesitant to have somebody's kids removed too. But then in, this, in those circumstances, I guess you have to kind of look at to the worst situation that could come out by now reporting something, you know? Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for this for the super chat. So, yeah, that's true. No electricity. <laughs> Somebody said, "No, nah, I ain't buying it. I'm chopping the door down and breaking windows." Let me check my uh, any more text. But I'm going to be bringing in a variety of stories, guys, like I've been doing. Sometimes it's a little tedious when you cover a bunch of different stories because it's easy to make mistakes and to type, try to follow everything. And
Hmm. I was reading some of the text from there. Thank you, Adakor. Appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat. So yeah, I'm going to head out of here, man. Thank you guys so much for coming through. Have a great day. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. We're going to be working on some more stories. We'll see what pops up tomorrow. We'll see if anything comes up with Brian Laundry. But there's just so many other things. Um, Jelani Day got an update as well. The autopsy results. Um, I don't think anything with Daniel Robinson. I did an update video on Kylan and Crystal. So just a lot of different things. But yeah, appreciate you guys. Take care. Peace.